My name is Armen Matosyan. I born in Armenia and live in Toronto for the last 10 years. My first encounter with Duduk, uh, I think the sound of Duduk is deeply ingrained into the DNA of every Armenian, I think from the uh, early childhood. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Duduk sound is recognized by Armenians uh, from thousands of other instruments. If you like hear an orchestration of some sort of hundred instruments and there is a sound of Duduk, everyone will recognize. So uh, I would say that it's deeply ingrained in me. I can't say I was, uh, Duduk was my, one of my favorite instruments since the childhood because it's uh, very mournful. I'm not a very uh, sad person myself. After immigrating to Canada, everyone tends to bring a piece of Armenia with themselves. And I think Duduk was one of them that I had at home just to have it. I never looked at it very seriously as something I would play. It was just a piece of souvenir there. And it turned out to be that the souvenir turned out to be a, some sort of hobby and then a more serious. Sometimes, someday, I wanted to see how the sound of Duduk myself at my home that I have. And uh, after uh, looking for quite a long time on how to play, I was, wasn't able to figure out. And I found a teacher here in Toronto, a very good friend, Victor Kotov, who gave me a couple of lessons on how to play Duduk. Uh, and I was heading to uh, Armenia that summer for a vacation, and I decided to meet someone there to take a couple of lessons to just to explore, to see uh, how, how the instruments sound, how to play some very basic tunes on it. And I, uh, once there, I was very lucky to meet my teacher, uh, Georgi Minasov, who taught me uh, uh, how to play Duduk. And my story actually very anecdotal. And I first went to his house for my first lesson, and he asked me to show what, what I got. I, I just showed him a simple tune, and he said, okay, so your fingering, fingering is good, but everything else uh, we should start learning uh, from scratch. And he uh, opened his book with uh, some music notes in it and asked me to play. And at that time, I couldn't uh, read music. And I say, I can't read music. And he said, well, now is the time to start. And in Armenian, we have uh, one uh, saying that says, Amotis Gatsum, it's some sort of sense of responsibility. And I had to go back because I have only two weeks in Armenia. I had to go back home and I had to learn how to read music. So this, our friendship began. And when I came back to Canada, I started to uh, take lessons from him uh, via Skype. And that's how it went. Now it's about three years that I, I, I study and play the Duke. Меня зовут Виктор Котов. Я профессиональный музыкант, изначально профессиональный пианист, и это моя основная работа. На дудуке я начал играть 
В 2005 году, как сейчас помню, это 1 марта была, пришла посылка. Вначале это были простые дудуки, но потом я заказал у очень-очень хорошего мастера, который делал дудуки для Дживана Гаспаряна, это самый известный дудукист с мировым именем. И мне хотелось тоже иметь такие инструменты, на которых он играет. И этот инструмент очень и очень нравится людям. То есть э, он несет такое умиротворение, успокоение, рекла, релакс, связь с космосом. У меня было объявление, что я преподаю дудук. И по этому объявлению меня нашел Армен. Он позвонил мне, у него в то время просто очень-очень сильное желание возникло. Человек не только хочет это слушать, но и хочет играть. И я так получилось, что первое объявление, которое нашел, это было мое. Он позвонил мне, и по стечению обстоятельств оказалось, мы, в общем-то, рядом живем. 15 километров все, меньше даже друг от друга. И так мы встретились, познакомились, и началось наше общение. И первые шаги получилось, что знакомство именно с инструментом это было через меня. Армен, хотел спросить у тебя одну вещь. Самое важное в дудуке — это тембр. Ну, это полная характеристика этого инструмента, это что он выражает. И у разных дудукистов пора... разный тембр, ну, свой специфический. И я... мне интересно, ты нашел свой на сегодняшний день? Знаешь что, Виктор Джан, пока что нет, потому что найти свой тембр — это сам очень-очень долгий процесс. Как я слышал, очень многие дудукисты требуются очень много лет, чтобы найти вот реально тот хороший бархатный ритм, который свойственен так армянскому дудуку. Да, именно вот армянский звук. Да. Это то, что пришло всем по душе во всем мире, и то, что стало очень популярным, этот инструмент из этнических, самый востребованный. Да, правильно. И армянский тембр, вот очень интересный тембр, но как бы его очень долго надо, надо разбивать, надо его искать все время. То, что я заметил, когда я играю, у начинающих, у всех тудукистов есть одна особенность — сжимать губы, когда играть. А это как бы убивает и тембр, вот, например, приблизительно вот так. Видишь, видишь как, как сжаты мои губы? Да. Ну, это, это естественно. Вот когда а, ты начинаешь делать что-то новое, у тебя и пальцы физически очень а, сжимают инструмент. И также у тебя вся мускулатура а, сжатая, а, то есть напряженная, и тоже сжимает, а это оставляет как бы тембр зани, а, заниживает. Класс Дудука был в школе, в которой я занимался пианистом. Что первое, говорит, что научиться надо, говорить слово «мама». Говорит, вот когда ты найдешь это слово, говорит, маму любишь, говорит, тут вырази на дадуке, и пошло. Вот, мама, мама. Как ты маму зовешь? Я как-то об этом что не думал, Виктор Джан, по правде говоря. Я вот с этого начал. С, друг, с другого контекста, как выросший в Армении, у меня да. а, с Тудуком а, другие представления, другие связи, relationship. Я, я никогда не думал, что я начну играть на Тудуке. Я да, тоже. Это 40 лет. Но потом так получилось. Но очень интересная, интересную вещь ты сказал. Я подумаю над этим, как звать маму на Тудуке. А вообще, если этому 2-3 тысячи лет, 2,5 тысячи, сложно сказать, но больше двух тысяч лет инструменту, то модерн дудук именно вот 
с таким механизмом, сколько лет ему, когда это примерно вышло в свет? Ну, не могу точно сказать, но где-то минимум 15-20 лет, когда эта идея была, я думаю, когда Минаса взял свой первый инструмент, вот. На нем играют в основном его ученики, но... Да, потому что школа да. Но он как бы остается также обыкновенным инструментом. То есть можно не использовать все эти леверс, и он остается обыкновенным дудуком, как вот этот наш. Ты занимаешься самым лучшим педагогом в мире, легендой, Георгием Минасовым. Mm -hmm. Georgi Minasov, I'm, uh, I would say I'm a very lucky person to meet him. He is, first of all, a very amazing uh, human being, person, himself. But other than that, he contributed so much to the development of Tuduk as an instrument, as a teacher, uh, as an author of the books. It's about, uh, he's 86 years old, but he still teaches uh, in the college. He performs, he, he is author of uh, four books, three more are coming, and he is inventor of several instruments, very important. And the amount he contributed to development of the Duke is incredible. Just to give you an idea about what type of person he is, what, uh, what moves him, what, uh, the Duke has been his love of his life, entire life. Uh, he was uh, performing a concert here in Toronto in January 2016, and they were flying back to Armenia and it was the uh, most terrible snowstorm that happened here and all the uh, flights have been cancelled. So they uh, were forced to stay here for two days and they got the, the worst possible uh, flight back home, about three stops, and they were landing uh, in Armenia about 2 or 3 a.m. in the night. So we were discussing this flight and he said, oh, okay, so we are landing in Armenia at 2 a.m. And so 8 a.m. I need to be teaching at the college and then in the evening it's my son's birthday party. So I have two blessings at one. So teaching for him uh, is a sort of blessing for his person. So he's, he's a very amazing uh, master player, again, inventor. The major theme of uh, Duduk has been always been uh, Armenian folk and spiritual songs. Because uh, if you take a look at the construction of the instrument, it's a very simple, non-tempered musical instrument. Uh, some, be some scholars believe uh, that it's from 1500 to 3000 years old. And of course, uh, during ancient times, it's, it's the only instrument that survived Armenian history. So the major theme is always folk songs and also spiritual songs because 
At the time, most of the knowledge uh, in Armenia was uh, concentrated and saved in the churches and in the monasteries. In fact, we have very beautiful uh, songs left uh, from the 10th century uh, by Grigor Narikatsi that are survived now and are performed by Duduk as well. But um, I would say in during Soviet Union times, Duduk was mostly constrained within Armenia and Soviet Union. But after the collapse of uh, Soviet Union after 2000, uh, Duduk uh, started, the Duduk theme expanded greatly. Uh, in 2000, uh, by the movie uh, called Gladiator, Hollywood movie, we know Jivan, great master player, Jivan Gasparin has performed uh, for the first time the, one of the soundtracks featured Duduk and it made Duduk uh, widely popular across the globe. So the theme right now is expanded greatly. There are so many great projects uh, that include uh, Duduk, uh, starting from jazz to classics and so on and so forth. So I think uh, Duduk is expanding taking also into consideration that Duduk as an instrument is also evolving. Now we have a uh, two octave instrument. Gives an opportunity to perform a wider range of music. So traditional duduk is a uh, small duduk, wooden duduk, which has uh, a range of about one octave and a little bit one and a quarter of octave. So that's a traditional instrument. Uh, Georgi Minasov has invented uh, two or three other types of duduks. One is called extended range duduk that has possibility of performing over the two octaves. So one quarter versus two octaves, now it gives better range. Uh, in two octaves, Duduk uh, has ability to perform uh, with like all 12 keys, uh, opens new opportunities. He also created a series of other instruments in the low tonalities like bass Duduk, baritone Duduk. And he formed his ensemble called Duduk Ner, uh, performs basically using all these four instruments together. Armenian music in Canada is re represented in uh, different genres in areas. First of all, if we take the classical Armenian music, uh, we have so many prominent uh, uh, Canadian Armenian uh, musicians and composer conductors here, like Peter Unjan, Nurhan Arman, uh, Isabel Bayrak Darian, Levon Ishanian, to name a few. I've noticed that during their work, they, uh, while performing their general repertoire, they uh, also bring um, uh, works from Armenian composers and also Armenian performers here. So in this, this area, Armenian music is, I, I think, very well represented in Canada. On the other side, if we're talking about traditional uh, Armenian music, it exists a lot uh, in Armenian churches, in Armenian Saturday schools. There is like dance uh, ensembles, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of performers. Uh, that are keeping traditional music as is here for the local population. But also on the third side, uh, if we talk about, for example, jazz, there's a lot of musicians that uh, create uh, music uh, in combination uh, with like other ethnic groups in, uh, in, in Canada, creating beautiful projects here. Uh, an example was uh, Arara Kilian's uh, project called Armenia Meets, uh, another country. So a series was the first series was Armenian meets Dominican, Armenian meets Cuba. So where musicians from Armenia and Cuba meet and they perform music from both of these countries, and uh, it has been amazing. There's a lot of projects like this.
in Canada, the beauty of Canada is that we have diversity here. Diversity in everything and uh, in the music specifically. Only in Canada, all types of uh, projects that otherwise in other places would seem not possible are possible. So uh, here, for example, you can have Armenian, Cuban, Vietnamese musicians join together to perform German song. It's all possible here. So that is the beauty of Canada, that is the beauty of being here and having the opportunity to explore and see what exists, see, because again, the amount of projects or uh, crazy projects that you can put in mind is possible to do here. When I first came to Canada, uh, and after like five, six years, I've noticed very interesting phenomenon. Uh, Armenia and Canada are sort of two different polarities. Armenia's history is about 3,000 years old, and Canada is 150 years old. Armenia is a very uniform country, while Canada is very diverse. Uh, so they are sort of on the different scales with uh, old and tradition that comes some sort of wisdom but it also comes some sort of constraint to grow with diversity there is always something new and there is opportunity to grow and and learn what i found that uh, canadian culture coupled with like my armenian traditions whatever i've grown up with they couple together can uh, give birth to something new something amazing uh, and uh, when combining these two elements, uh, uh, I think there is uh, no limit where you can go in terms of music or your work or anything uh, you would like to be or have. 